Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna continue on with 14.2 and we're gonna wrap up our conversation on um, integrals to find volumes in three dimensions. The last big concept that we have to talk about here is this idea of average value. And before we dive into exploring these two formulas that I have stated here, I wanna go back and I wanna parallel this idea of an average value of functions with, of two variables with the idea of average value of functions of a single variable like you talk about in Calc 1. So to start this conversation, let's head back to Calc 1. So let's say we have some function, this y equals f of x, and we wanna know the average value of this function on the interval from a to b. Well, the way that we think about average value when it comes to an average value of a continuous function, it's a little different than the way that we think about the average value of, say, like a set of numbers. So if I give you the numbers like 3, 4, 5, you don't go 3 plus 4 plus 5 divided by 3 and then get 4. If we have this continuous function, we kind of think about, well, if I were to take the curve on this interval from A to B and flatten it out, so perhaps push the high points down a little bit, push the low points up a little bit, to which value would this curve level out to be? I'm just kind of going to guess here, but I would say our curve might actually level out to be roughly this value right here. And it's this value, so the value on the y-axis that corresponds to this value, this is our average value. I'll use a capital A just to denote that this is going to be our average value. All right. So the idea here might seem kind of strange, it might seem kind of straightforward, but the, the process or the approach that we're going to use to find A is going to be to compare areas, right? So kind of like I'm saying, we almost want to take this area here and push that part of our curve down so that that area actually comes over here and fills in what's happening over here. So really we'd like to compare some areas here. Now what do I mean by comparing areas? Well, we can think about this area underneath the curve as just being whoop, as just being an integral. So this area that I have highlighted here in yellow, I'll actually use orange to write that out. So that area, let me denote this as area under the curve. is going to be the integral of f of x with respect to x from a to b. Right? So that's the area underneath the curve. But what we want to fit that area into is we want to fit that into the area underneath that straight line. So we kind of want to fit that area into this area here. Well, let's go ahead and let's think about what that area is. So that's actually the area of the rectangle. Well, if we think about a few things, the height of the area of this rectangle is going to be A, is going to be that average value. And the width of this rectangle is going to be this distance here, which is nothing other than B minus A. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to squeeze the area underneath the curve into that rectangle. Well, if we set both of these equal to one another, we have a, our average value a times b minus a is equal to the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So now if we want to solve for that average value, capital A, we can just divide both sides by b minus a. So we get our average value is going to be equal to 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So that right there was our calc 1 formula for finding the average value of a function of a single variable on some interval from let's say a to b. So the Calc 3 idea is going to be very similar, except now instead of dealing with a function of a single variable, we're going to be dealing with a function of two variables. 
So let's go ahead and let's have this whole conversation over again. This time, what I'd like to start with is a function of two variables. So let's just go ahead and let's draw a pretty basic looking function. Try my best to draw something kind of clean looking. This leg back here doesn't quite look straight. I don't know why. I always struggle to get any of these to look straight. But at some point, good enough is going to have to be good enough. All right, there we go. So there's, there's our surface in two dimensions. Let's go ahead and give it a name. We'll call it z equals f of x, y. So what we're looking for here is we're going to be looking for the average value of this function, this function of two variables over, well, now it's not just going to be an interval. Now it's going to be over some sort of a region. So I'm actually going to go ahead and we'll just call this region down in the XY plane. We'll call that R. So I'll say, this is my region down here. I could have drawn it to be a little bit more rectangular, but this is fine. It's a little bit more of a, a general region, if you will. Okay. So now what we'd like to do is if we're thinking about finding an average value, well, this might be a little complicated, might be a little tricky for us to wrap our minds around, but I think we should be able to kind of visualize the way that this is going to work, right? So if I wanted to imagine a function having an average value, value over this surface, right? the average value of the points along this surface here. Let me do this real quick. Let me go from peak to peak. Kind of helps give me a little bit more scale. So if we were looking for the average value of this function over this region R, we might kind of visualize it as taking on some value right about here. I'm going to try my best to draw this. I apologize if this isn't flawless but maybe the average value of our surface lies right about here. So let's say this z value is our average value. I'm going to denote that a, All right? So essentially what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to fit, let's say the volume underneath the surface above our x, y plane into this rectangular prism type shape that I have. So we kind of want to smush down some of the high points and we want to drag up some of the low points so that it fits underneath that horizontal plane, right? So that flat plane, if you will. Okay, so the way that we want to think about this then is we want to force the volume underneath the surface to be equal to the volume of that prism, right? So that's what we need to do here. So we need the volume under the surface to be equal to the volume of the prism. Okay. Well, the volume underneath the surface is going to be the double integral of our function over our region R. Now, we want this to be equal to the volume of our prism. So the volume of our prism is a little bit more involved, but this is just going to be the area of the region, right? So the area of the region 
is going to be the double integral over r dA. So this is just the area of r, that's all that this is, times the height, so times the average value times a. So we need these two quantities to be equal. So we need the area times the, or sorry, the average value, not the area, times the double integral over our region to be equal to the volume. So our double integral over r, f x y, dA. So what we end up with is our average value is going to be equal to the double integral of our function over the region divided by the double integral over our region, which is just the area of our region. So this right here is where the average value formula comes from on the previous page. So this right here is the volume under the function. And this right here is the area of R. Okay. So let's go and let's try out an example. This example six should be fairly straightforward for us. So we should be able to get through this pretty quickly. Right. It says find the average value of the function f of xy equals one half xy over the region where x goes between zero and four and y goes between zero and three. All right. So our average value Remember what the formula says. This is going to be the double integral over the region of our function of xy dA divided by the double integral over our region of dA. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's set it up on this page and then we'll actually evaluate it on the next page. So we've got a double integral. Well, we have to think about how we want to set up our region, but just looking at our region, this is fairly straightforward for us to think about. If you wanted to graph this in two dimensions or three dimensions, it's fairly simple, but x goes between zero and four, and y goes between zero and three, so our region r is just a rectangular region. So we could set this up in either order. So let's go with respect to x first, just because we have to pick one. There's no reason why we couldn't integrate with respect to y first. But let's integrate with respect to x first. So x goes from 0 to 4, y goes from 0 to 3. Our integrand is going to be the function that we're starting off with, which is 1 half xy. And then like I said, we're integrating with respect to x first, and then we're integrating with respect to y second. Made a typo there. Right. Now what we have to do is we have to divide by the double integral over our region. But if you remember, this double integral over our region is really just the area of our region. So we have a rectangle whose width is four, whose height is three. The area of that region is just 12. All right. So we've actually got our average value function set up. Now we just have to evaluate the double integral. So let me go ahead and just copy this over to the next page. And from here, we'll go ahead and get evaluating. So we could pull the 1 half and the 12 out front. Let's pull that out as a 1 24th. Then we've got the integral from 0 to 3. We've got the integral from 0 to 4. I already pulled the 1 half out front. And so our integrand is just going to be an x, y, dx, dy. So now I'll integrate x, or I'll integrate x, y with respect to x. So I'm just integrating x and thinking about y is coming along like a constant. So 24 will stay out front, 1 24th will stay out front. We've got this integral from 0 to 3. If I integrate xy with respect to x, that's going to leave me with an x squared times y all over 2. But we're evaluating this from x equals 0 up to x equals 4, and then we have to integrate with respect to y. So if I plug in a 4, let's think about how this is going to clean this up. So we'll have this 1 24th out front still. We're going to be able to clean up this 124th as we go. I just don't want to do too much math all in one step. Still have this integral from 0 to 3. But if I plug in a 4, 
I'm going to have a 16y over 2. Well, 16y over 2 reduces down to an 8y. And then if I plug in 0, that's going to leave me with a 0. You could put a minus 0 here. We don't really need to put the minus 0, so I'm going to ignore it. But should you feel so compelled, by all means, go ahead and include your minus 0 there. And then this has to be integrated with respect to y. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we can do. Well, 8 over 24 is just 1 third. So this is going to be a 1 third. And then if we integrate, um, if we integrate y, that's going to leave us with a y squared over 2. But this is going from 0 to 3. So if we plug in 3, we'll have a 1 times 9 over 3, which is going to be a 3 divided by 2. So this is going to be a 3 halves. And if we plug in 0, that's just going to leave us with 0. So we could write a minus 0, or we could just ignore the 0 because it's not impacting our final answer. So our final answer, our average value of our function over that interval, ends up being 3 halves. So there we go. All right, so with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it here for today. That is how we compute average values of functions of two variables. If we really wanted to look at functions of more variables, we would use the exact same thought process to generalize this idea. But for our purposes, we're only focusing on functions of two variables at this point. So with that, I'm going to leave it here. If you do have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in class a bit later on this week. Thank you. Bye.